The end of month seven randomly coincided with the end of our backpacking trip. So I'm curious to see um, how surviving off the land for four days affected my weight. Last month I weighed 157, so <laughs> I suspect that I'm gonna weigh less. I don't know, maybe like 150 or something. There you go, 151.2. I lost about six pounds this month, and uh, which is interesting because the beginning of the month I really felt like I was feasting, like maybe I was putting on weight because I was having milk and yogurt and butter and pigeons were pretty consistent. All right, month seven, down. Uh, you'll forgive me if I am a little zoomed out right now. I got back from backpacking and I proceeded to eat four avocados and fall asleep for 15 hours. Month seven started with feeling like I was really in a siege. Like I felt like I was just trying to wait out Zap. Just like every day down was a victory. And uh, I feel like I had less and less food every day. And uh, I just felt like I was rationing. I was thinking about eating rats and I don't know, just the psychology just felt like I was confined. And then the middle of the month, all of a sudden, you know, we, uh, we started getting some milk and yogurt and butter and strawberries came in and springtime really hit and it was like winter just cleared all of a sudden. I really felt like that second wind just rushed over me. The second wind I've been waiting for, holding out for. Everything was amazing. The avocados have just been like loading the trees. The bounty of nature is starting to come into full effect. It's kind of miraculous to see how intensely the season changes very quickly and maybe how you don't notice that if you're not really like geared towards getting food out of the seasons. My mom had an interesting experience this month where she found a turtle in this road and took it out took it to this lake and she, she set it down near the lake and it just blooped right in the lake and disappeared. And it was like it knew exactly what to do. And that got me thinking that it's interesting that, um, you know, you can drop an animal anywhere in its environment and it naturally will survive with, you know, no, no difficulty really. And yet a person, if you drop it in the natural environment, you know, where we evolved, has a very hard time surviving and usually will probably die without assistance. Um, if I hadn't had my 22, I would have been really miserable. And um, if I was left there for, you know, the rest of my life, I would certainly probably die. This became fairly obvious on my backpacking trip. are so out of tune with the natural environment that they've come from that they just can't exist there. I'm beginning to realize more and more that I'm trying to simulate the apocalypse as closely as possible and yet really I'm simulating the experiment. So being up against the experiment instead of being up against the apocalypse really changes things. Even in the, if I'm trying to convince myself I'm in the apocalypse, I know that I'm just against the rules of the experiment which forces all kinds of weird problems into enacting the apocalypse. The largest aspect of this, obviously, is that psychologically I know I just have to make it one year and then I can go back to living my day-to-day -day life. And so, in that aspect, I do a lot of things that I wouldn't normally do in the apocalypse. Like, for example, when I go to Allison's house and I use, um, I use petroleum gas to cook my food with, I would never do that in the apocalypse. Gas would be too valuable for other things. Um, a shining example of this is that this year I've planted pretty much all of my seeds um, because I want to get as much food as I can. But if it was the apocalypse, I'd probably be saving half those seeds just in case something went wrong or so I could plant them next year, you know, just as a backup, you know, as a seed bank. Or like, you know, last month I had this old ratty jacket that I threw away and that would be really valuable in the apocalypse. And uh, just all these little things keep popping up where I, I realize I'm up against the experiment more and more and whatever parameters I set out for myself. I noticed this month that um, usually in life people eat just because they enjoy to eat because food tastes good. 
Sometimes they eat because they're hungry, but a lot of times I eat just because I know I need to eat. Um, a lot of the food I eat, I don't really particularly enjoy. Um, like the hunger is not what drives me to eat like thistles or whatever. But I put it in my mouth, I chew it, and I swallow it because I know that um, I can't afford to lose any more weight and I need all the nutrition I can get. I get hungry, I get tired, and then I want to eat less. I just like the effort of eating seems to be exhausting to me. I noticed also this month that when I prepare really good food, my mouth actually starts watering before I eat it. Which is kind of funny because people always use that as an expression like, oh my mouth was watering and it smelled so good. But like that happens to me now, which is kind of funny. <laughs> I'm really starting to feel the frustration of documenting everything, <laughs> as I'm documenting everything. I spend at least a whole day a week editing videos and I'm constantly grabbing my camera or charging batteries or offloading video or freaking whatever it is, journalizing endlessly. And all that stuff, um, while novel in the beginning has become fairly tedious and time consuming and definitely a hindrance to me surviving. At the same time, it's kind of become the motivation to do things that I wouldn't normally do. Like maybe I would just sit around here and eat avocados and blue jays or pigeons and stuff out of the garden instead of go out and try some new forage food that I haven't had my knowledge and have something to video. Um, so that's been kind of a double. Mm, I had several people ask me over the last couple months if I get full easier because my stomach has shrunk because I eat less food. And um, that's actually not the case because generally a very large salad every day or a very large bowl of soup every day. So at least once a day my stomach is getting stretched out and thus it hasn't really shrunk. That is seven months down and five to go. I'm starting to get the feeling like I want to be there before I know it. And I'm trying to force myself to savor this and enjoy it while it's going on. Uh, but sometimes I just want it to be over. We'll see if I can gain back some weight during month eight.